Welcome back everyone, I'm Jordan Giesecke, and this is The Limiting Factor. Today I'll be doing an analysis of Tesla's in-house 4680 structural battery pack compared to the BYD Blade battery and the CATL Qi Lean battery. The approach I'll be taking is to look at the design of each battery pack, the advantages and disadvantages of those designs across six factors, and then, on average, how each pack design compares on a relative basis. In short, all these battery packs are roughly neck and neck if viewed from the potential of their base architecture. Each architecture has quirks and eccentricities because there are always trade-off decisions with batteries. However, all the packs should significantly outperform last generation packs. I'm sure some of you are surprised at the performance of the Tesla 4680 pack here, given that in the last video, I showed that the 4680 cell still has a long way to go to meet the expectations set at battery day. But, as I said a moment ago, we'll be viewing this through the lens of the potential of each architecture on a relative basis. This is, as opposed to where each architecture currently stands on an absolute basis or how quickly it will develop over time. Later in the video, I'll explain my thinking here in more detail. Suffice to say, there's no way to do a like-for-like like comparison of the packs because all we have at this point is marketing material. However, based on what each company has shown us, we can roughly see how each pack is constructed, which can give us insights into the ultimate potential of each battery pack design. Whether BYD, CATL, and Tesla can max out the potential of those designs is a different story, but I have confidence that they will because each company has brilliant engineers. Before we begin, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. This is the support that gives me the freedom to avoid chasing the algorithm and sponsors. As always, the links for support are in the description. To kick things off, some people may be wondering why I'm leaving out Ford and GM battery packs. I'm not covering those battery packs in this video because they're not in the same league as their counterparts from BYD, CATL, and Tesla. Both GM and Ford battery packs enclose the cells in a module before placing them in the pack. Modules are sub-battery packs within the main battery pack. Besides the modules, GM and Ford also use cross-bracing within the pack to create rigidity. BYD, CATL, and Tesla have been using the module with bracing approach for a decade, but they're now abandoning it because they've found better and cheaper ways to build battery packs. Let's look at some historical context to explain why BYD, CATL, and Tesla used modules and bracing in the first place, which will lead nicely into structural analysis of their new packs. Tesla has said in the past that the reason why they used modules was because in the early days of EVs, particularly with their Roadster, that they wanted a way to repair the battery pack if it was defective, because back then, cell and pack reliability were lower. The thought was that if modules were used, the module could be swapped out instead of replacing the entire pack. Second, a decade ago, EV makers were just learning to crawl with their first battery packs. It was struggle enough just to build a battery pack that actually worked and also met all the thermal, safety, structural, and energy density requirements. So, it was easier to assign specific components to specific use cases, like putting cross-bracing in the pack for structure. This made legacy batteries from BYD, CATL, and Tesla roughly similar in their design. Cell to module, module to pack, and reinforced with cross-bracing. But now, after 10 years of experience, engineers at BYD, CATL, and Tesla are removing the modules and cross-bracing because those components are unnecessary duplication and therefore dead weight. The cells are placed directly in the pack and the packs don't use cross-bracing. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So this is why I'm not including battery packs from GM and Ford in this analysis. They're launching electric vehicles with overly complex battery packs that their more mature counterparts like BYD started abandoning last year, making GM and Ford a full generation behind. With that in mind, let's do a quick run-through of the design of the CATL Qi Lean, BYD Blade, and Tesla 4680 battery packs. CATL Qi Lean integrates the foam spacers, or thermal pads, the liquid cooling plate, and cross bracing to create what I'll call structural cooling. The structural cooling is placed between each row of battery cells, and the battery cells are placed directly into the pack with no modules. 
The cells are hard-shelled prismatic, or rectangular cells. That is, the structural cooling replaces the cross-bracing, and the cells are carried like cargo. The BYD blade battery also uses prismatic cells, but they're long and thin. The cells stretch across the battery pack, and they also serve as the structure of the battery pack, replacing the steel beams. They look like blades, so BYD called it the blade battery pack. Cooling is done with a thermal pad at the bottom of the battery pack, and again, there's no modules. The Tesla 4680 pack uses hundreds of cylindrical battery cells, and between every other row of cells is a cooling ribbon, much like a bandolier of bullets. Those bandoliers are placed in the cell tray. A lid is placed on top, and then polyurethane foam is injected into the pack. The polyurethane hardens, and the combination of the foam and the battery cells forms a honeycomb-type structure similar to what's used in airplane wings. With a basic understanding of the design of BYD Blade, CATL Chilin, and the Tesla 4680 packs, let's look at how the design choices can affect performance characteristics like rigidity, energy density, cooling, and safety. Before we get into it, some caveats. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be taking a relative approach. This means I'm not going to be providing specific values for things like energy density or system integration efficiency. There's two reasons for that. First, we don't know the logic behind the marketing specs, or if the marketing specs are accurate. I've shown at least two prominent examples of this in past videos. As I showed in the last 4680 teardown video, Tesla has a long way to go to achieve what they showcased at Battery Day. And, as I explained in my BYD Blade video, the BYD Blade considerably underperforms its marketed specs. That is, there are so many unknowns, so much hype, and so much obfuscation that it's an exercise in futility to do a proper comparison between the battery packs if we just trust the marketing material. That brings us to the second, more positive reason why I'm taking a relative approach. I teased at the beginning of the video that the pack designs from BYD, CATL, and Tesla are roughly neck and neck if viewed from the potential of their base architecture. So, if all the packs are roughly equal, then what becomes interesting is the reasons why the performance of each pack varies across metrics. That, in turn, encourages us to look at the battery packs from a first principles perspective to understand the trade-off decisions that were involved in designing each battery pack. As a final note, I think it's worth noting why I'm not going to be including charging speed in my analysis. It's because in my view, in the next decade, simply getting enough battery packs at a reasonable price is the main priority for automakers. So long as the charge rate of their vehicles is competitive with other offerings on the market, the battery packs will sell. And if they do have the luxury of choice, I wouldn't put charge speed in the top five priorities for automakers. Cutting weight from their vehicles, thermal performance, and safety are more important than charge speed. With the caveats aside, let's get into how each performance metric is affected by the design choices, starting with rigidity. Rigidity is important because the more rigid the architecture of a battery pack, the more weight that can be cut out of the vehicle. This is because older generation packs not only used cross bracing in the pack, they also used bracing around the pack in the vehicle structure. Next generation packs eliminate cross bracing, which increases the energy density of the pack itself. And they reduce vehicle weight by eliminating redundancies between the pack and the vehicle structure because they become part of the vehicle structure. The greater the rigidity of the pack, the greater the total potential weight reduction and range increase. Both the BYD and CATL packs appear to use ladder frame designs. In the case of BYD, the ladder frame is provided by the blade batteries themselves, whereas for the CATL pack, Qi Lin uses structural cooling. In both cases, the cells will be bolted in place, and will probably also use some adhesive for additional reinforcement. In the case of Tesla's 4680 pack, the cells themselves use a reinforced cell can that's about two to three times thicker than a typical cell can. There are no bolts or fasteners around the cells. They're entombed in a tough polyurethane foam that's pumped into the pack. The combination of the polyurethane foam and cells forms a super rigid monolithic structure. That monolithic structure should have superior rigidity to a pack with a finite number of structural members, meaning the Tesla pack is the winner here. Moving on to energy density. I'm going to be focused on volumetric energy density because we have visual references that provide hints to volume utilization. But gravimetric energy density should correlate fairly well. 
the Tesla pack uses close-packed cylindrical cells in a hexagonal array within a rectangular enclosure, which means that the maximum packing density is about 91%. The BYD Blade and CATL Qi Lean packs both use rectangular prismatic cells in a rectangular enclosure, which maximizes volumetric energy density. Rectangular cells in a rectangular enclosure is clearly the winner here for packing density. But we also have to take into account battery chemistry. Nickel-based cells store about 40-50% to 50 more energy than iron-based cells. The CATL Qi Lean battery pack can use either high energy nickel or low energy iron depending on the use case. For now, Tesla is using high energy nickel cells for their first battery pack, and BYD is using low energy iron cells in their blade pack. This means Qi Lean packs using nickel cells will have the highest energy density because they use high energy density cells in a high density packing arrangement. The Tesla 4680 pack will come in second because it uses high energy density nickel cells in a low density packing arrangement. The iron based Qi Lean and blade packs tie for third because they use low energy cells in a high density packing arrangement. As for cooling, BYD Blade uses plate cooling in the bottom of their packs. This is a suboptimal cooling arrangement. As CATL rightly points out in their presentation, cooling the sides of prismatic cells instead of cooling just the base increases the cooling area by four times. Tesla's pack also uses side cooling, but they only cool about 20% of the cell. That's better than base cooling, but not as good as cooling the entire side of the cell like Qi Lean. CATL Qi Lean appears to have the best cooling. Tesla second, and BYD Blade comes in last. If you want to know the full story of why side cooling is better, check out my ribbon cooling video. Let's move on to safety. What do I mean by safety? I mean the mechanisms in place to slow the spread of thermal runaway within a battery cell and also between battery cells. By thermal runaway, I mean battery cells overheating or exploding. Safety is a touchy subject, so I'll start with some context. Vehicles that use BYD, CATL, and Tesla battery packs will have a lower likelihood of catching on fire than internal combustion vehicles, and so I'd feel safe driving a vehicle that uses any of their battery packs. And regardless of likelihood, EV battery packs are designed to keep the passengers of the vehicle safe for a certain period of time. But the more time you have to get out of the vehicle or to get away from the vehicle, the better. And that's my focus in this video. Why bring safety into it at all? First, EV fires catch a disproportionate amount of negative media attention. Second, keeping passengers safe should always be the top priority. And third, increasing energy density creates safety challenges. All battery pack manufacturers seek to maximize energy density and therefore performance of a battery pack, but also have to contend with their ability to safely control that energy. The ideal is to have high energy density and high safety, but those two factors work in opposition to each other, which means it's difficult to both improve energy density and safety at the same time. There's a false assumption out there, particularly with the hype around solid state batteries, that it's possible to make a battery that's 100% safe. It's not, because batteries store an enormous amount of energy. Generally, EV fires happen when the pack is pulverized in a high-speed vehicle accident and multiple cells are damaged at once, which is why the nail puncture test here isn't necessarily a good indicator of real-world safety. But even if the vehicle isn't involved in an accident, battery cells and packs can spontaneously erupt into flames due to manufacturing defects and poor quality control. I don't have insights into the quality and control processes of BYD, CATL, and Tesla, and so I won't be including that in my safety ranking. So again, what I'll be looking at specifically is how well they can control thermal runaway when it does happen based on what I can see in the marketing material. As a final note, battery safety is a science all to itself, and the safety analysis I'll do in a moment isn't safety advice. Every new battery pack is a complex multi-scale thermal and electrochemical system, and manufacturers don't know exactly how their pack will perform in real life until there are thousands of them on the road for a number of years. As I mentioned before, there are two broad classes of lithium-ion battery, iron and nickel. Iron batteries are inherently safer for three reasons. They contain less energy per unit of volume and weight. They decompose at higher temperatures, and when they do start decomposing, they release less heat per gram of material. 
The BYD blade starts off on the right foot with an iron-based chemistry and builds on that by using a long, thin battery cell. That means although the cells contain a lot of energy, any puncture or damage to the cell will damage fewer layers and can dissipate heat more easily. This is why blade cells can be punctured and not erupt into flames. But battery packs are difficult to master, and despite the blade cells having thermal safety features, BYD blade packs have caught on fire. The one knock I have against the blade pack from a safety perspective is that the cells are tightly packed together, so there's little to slow the spread of thermal propagation between cells. I'm assuming there's thermal or fire retardant insulation between the cells because it's common, but I don't have confirmation of that. With that in mind, the BYD pack appears to be the winner here in terms of safety. But let's look at CATL and Tesla. Qi Lin uses shorter cells than the blade pack, but they're also thicker and may trap more heat. Where I'm torn with the Qi Lin versus blade is that the Qi Lin pack has liquid in between each row of cells rather than thermal or fire retardant insulation. Water can absorb a lot of heat, but it can also boil off or drain, which creates other hazards and inconsistencies. With that in mind, I'd rate the CATL Chin Lean Iron-Based Pack a close second behind the Blade Pack. The Nickel Chin Lean Pack is a different story altogether. Large prismatic nickel cells contain a lot of volatile material, with relatively little to contain that energy. CATL claims that their Chin Lean Pack can cool the cells quickly enough to mitigate thermal runaway. I think that could be the case with LFP cells which heat up rather slowly, but not with nickel battery cells which heat up and explode within a few seconds. With that in mind, I'd rate the nickel Qi Lean pack fourth in terms of safety. Tesla's pack is also a high nickel pack, but it contains a slew of safety features. The 4680 cells likely contain an overpressure mechanism on the bottom of the cells. The 4680 cells are smaller than a prismatic cell and therefore contain less energy, and the 4680 has a shell that's two to three times thicker than a typical battery cell. As a side note, the bottom of the Tesla battery packs are designed to melt and drop cells during a fire, which makes it easier for firefighters to control the blaze. As per the Monroe teardown, this appears to include the new 4680 battery pack. Elon Musk has said that safety is Tesla's number one priority, and it shows. I spoke with engineers at Tesla at the Giga Austin event, and they confirmed that the new 4680 pack is safer than the older 2170 packs despite using larger cells. However, it is still a volatile nickel-based pack, which means it'll be in third place behind the iron packs. What about costs? At the moment, the cost of nickel and iron-based chemistries is similar despite the fact that iron-based cells use cheaper materials. In the past, iron-based cells were cheaper, and I'm going to assume that we'll return to that market situation in the future. I'm not sure if that's how it'll play out, but it may not matter because, as we'll see, EV makers may just have to pay the price the market will bear to third-party suppliers. Plus, in-house production is where I expect the savings to be, rather than chemistry. With regards to assembly, the BYD Blade Pack appears to be the cheapest to make. It's a sandwich of iron-based cells with plate cooling across the bottom of the pack. The cells are large, which means fewer cells are required, which means fewer electrical and mechanical connections. I don't know how much simpler it can get than that. The CATL Qi Lean Pack will be more expensive to assemble because it uses more cells, which means a higher part count and more connections. Additionally, there's cooling between each row of cells, and each cell in each row will probably need to be glued or bolted in place. Let's compare that to the Tesla pack before assigning a ranking. The 4680 pack uses up to a thousand cells, which requires a complex current collector. However, it also uses minimal fasteners and instead fixes everything in place by pumping polyurethane foam into the pack. It also only uses cooling on every other row of cells, which reduces part count compared to Qi Lean's cooling. If that were the end of it, I'd say the assembly of the Tesla 4680 pack would be on par with the cost of the Qi Lean pack. However, I expect Tesla's pack will be cheaper to manufacture because the cells in the pack will be cheaper so long as Tesla can get their dry battery electrode process working. That process will reduce cell cost by reducing energy usage, capital cost, and floor space. Plus, Tesla cells use a tabless electrode, and cylindrical cells are quicker and easier to manufacture. 
all that adds up to higher throughput and lower costs for the cells, which of course reduces the pack level cost. With that in mind, I'd give Tesla nickel-based 4680 battery packs the runner-up position behind iron-based BYD packs, followed by iron-based Qilin packs, and then nickel-based Qilin packs. When I factor all these variables using a 10-point system and average across the scores, the battery packs are, for the most part, neck and neck. The Tesla 4680 structural pack comes in first at 9.0, BYD blade second at 8.8. Chinlin Iron at 3rd at 8.6, and Chinlin Nickel in 4th at 8.4. The Tesla pack only takes the cake because it doesn't have any serious drawbacks. It's a good all-rounder. However, let's add in another variable, scalability. Iron-based lithium-ion battery packs will dominate this decade because iron is more readily available. If we factor that in, then the BYD battery pack comes in first, the Qinlin Iron and Tesla 4680 packs come in second, and Qinlin Nickel comes in third. But as we know, Tesla also plans to produce an iron-based 4680 battery cell. I'm sure you're also curious to know where last-generation battery packs rank. With those added to the table, everything stays the same on relative terms, but the Tesla 4680 iron battery pack sweeps the board and pushes every other cell down a rank. Although an iron-based 4680 would have a high average score, it would have one major fault. The energy density would be on par with last-generation iron-based battery packs. However, Tesla should still be able to get a 300-mile range out of the pack in the next few years due to improvements in chemistry and weight savings at the vehicle level from their structural pack and gigacastings. Let's walk through the other assumptions behind some of these numbers, because I haven't fully explained everything we see here. Why do I show the Iron 4680 pack having slightly better cooling performance than the Nickel 4680? It's because iron cells have lower thermal requirements than nickel cells. That didn't happen with the Qi Lean pack because the cooling is already maxed out with nickel cells. So I just gave the iron cells a 10 out of 10 as well. Next, some people might think I've underplayed the Qi Lean Nickel pack due to its high energy density. But energy density isn't the highest priority for automakers. Tesla could make a 600-mile range vehicle today with last-generation technology, but they don't because right now the game is about getting more vehicles on the road rather than fewer with longer range. Next, notice that the last-generation cells all perform significantly worse in most areas than the new generation of packs. Even the pack I rated lowest, the Qinlin Nickel Pack, rates better than older packs. There's clearly a generational improvement here. If you're a cell and pack-constrained automaker, and all of them are, you'd be happy to get any of these battery packs. And if none of them were available, you'd readily accept a last-generation pack that uses modules and cross-bracing. That's clearly the case because that's what GM and Ford are doing. They're happy to take a 5-10% to hit on range and battery pack cost if it means they can produce some EVs rather than none. The same is true for Tesla. Tesla's still using 18x65mm cells, a form factor that debuted in 1994, and their fastest vehicle, the Model S, which uses a pack with modules and cross-bracing. Why didn't I give Tesla extra points for scaling based on their battery lines that produce seven times more cells than other cell lines? You can add in points if you don't agree with my perspective, which is that in the long term, battery production will be limited by raw materials, not battery factories. There's a glut of battery cell production coming online and a growing deficit of materials to feed those factories. In the short term, the 4680 production system is going to allow Tesla to catch up to the bigger players more quickly and with less resources. But they'll eventually hit a materials bottleneck like everyone else. The extent of that bottleneck depends on the execution of Tesla's Master Plan Part 3. What all this means is that instead of giving Tesla credit for both scaling and cost, I increased Tesla's score in just cost, where they show as cheaper than comparable chemistries and next generation pack designs. Before we move on to the last chart, why didn't I account for the vertical integration of BYD, CATL, and Tesla and the ways that might affect their ability to scale? That's a topic worth expanding on, but it's probably best as a standalone video because the situation is evolving quickly due to Tesla's plans and geopolitical considerations. Suffice to say, there wouldn't be a cut-and-dry answer. The video would or will be more strategic and involve a lot of what-ifs. 
However, adjacent to vertical integration are shipping costs, profit margin, and taxes. Those are worth touching on in this video, which brings us to the final rankings table. The final rankings table is a slight remix of the last rankings table. All I've done here is shift the lens from a production cost perspective to Tesla's cost perspective. Tesla won't be selling batteries to other automakers anytime soon, but BYD and CATL will be selling batteries to Tesla. Tesla's in-house production will have minimal shipping costs, won't include a profit margin to a third party, and won't have an associated tax cost. To account for that, I've applied a flat relative cost score of 6 to BYD and CATL's packs regardless of chemistry. Why? For two reasons. First, I expect the cost savings Tesla gets from in-house production will be far greater than any price differential between chemistries. In-house production will save Tesla 10-20% to on shipping, margins, and taxes. Furthermore, Tesla expects to be able to produce cells cheaper than anyone else, which further increases the difference between in-house and third-party cell costs. Beyond that, market forces may also come into play. My thinking is that even if one company can produce cells cheaper than the others, regardless of the cost of the material's input from nickel or iron, the market price will likely be similar for the battery packs because it's a supply-constrained environment. There will of course be some price variation between contracts, but overall, I expect they'll charge the price that the market will bear. What all this means is that from Tesla's perspective, in-house 4680 battery packs will be significantly cheaper than any other option on the market. So, although many people seem to be viewing BYD and CATL as Tesla's competition, they aren't. It's a failure of logic. First, Tesla won't be selling battery cells on the open market anytime soon. Second, no battery pack can compete with Tesla's in-house costs. Third, despite the in-house production cost advantage, Tesla's demand for battery cells will be so great that in-house production won't always be able to meet it. Tesla is such an efficient manufacturer that they can buy battery cells at a premium from BYD and CATL, put them in their vehicles, and turn a profit. They're suppliers, not competitors. In summary, none of the next generation battery packs significantly outperform each other, whether that be the BYD Blade, CATL Qi Lean, or Tesla 4680 battery pack. But none of them are duds either. They're all next generation battery packs that live up to that designation. They're the next step forward in battery pack technology and have the potential to be better than last generation battery packs in nearly every respect. There are of course marketers, fanboys, and hype merchants that may push the idea that one pack is significantly better than the other. But, at least based on the information we have right now, that's not the case. What's more interesting to me is why the design of each pack is so different. The bread and butter of both BYD and CATL is still iron-based and will continue to be iron-based because iron is abundant and they need a highly scalable solution for the Chinese market. But in addition to scalability, they're working to increase vehicle range for Chinese consumers, which means they need to use a prismatic format to maximize energy density. With the prismatic form factor chosen, the best two options to eliminate cross-bracing was to either replace it with structural cooling or to turn the cells themselves into cross-braces. Tesla's in a different boat. Their goal was to maximize production speed in a continuous motion process. This made a cylindrical battery cell the best option because it's the easiest and cheapest cell form factor to manufacture. Furthermore, they plan to use a variety of chemistries to support a wide range of use cases. Iron-based battery cells just won't cut it for the long-range Cybertruck and the Semi, so Tesla will need to use high-energy nickel chemistries. High-energy nickel chemistries are better suited to a small form factor because it makes controlling thermal runaway easier. With the cylindrical form factor chosen, the best way to eliminate cross-bracing was to use a close-packed honeycomb design fully bonded by polyurethane foam. If you twisted my arm, I'd say I prefer Tesla's approach because the 4680 structural pack is a good all-rounder for both nickel and iron-based chemistries. That makes sense for Tesla because Tesla started with a blank sheet of paper and wanted to keep as many chemistry options open in the future as possible. I think it's the most well future-proofed of the pack designs, but that's just a hunch because the battery industry is rapidly evolving and looking more than three to five years out is difficult. The situation is complex for Tesla. 
Tesla is a newcomer and is tackling a lot of new technologies at once, which raises anxiety levels. And it doesn't help that, as I showed in the last video, Tesla is moving slower than expected. On the other hand, Tesla doesn't need to compete on the open market with their 4680 cell and structural pack, which means that even if they don't meet the performance targets I show here anytime soon, they'll still be cheaper than any alternative they can purchase from BYD and CATL. And that's not to mention that in-house manufacturing will provide Tesla better control of its own destiny by allowing them to scale at will rather than being at the mercy of third-party suppliers. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon with the link at the end of the video or as a YouTube member. You can find the details in the description. A special thanks to my YouTube members and all the other patrons listed in the credits. I appreciate all of your support and thanks for tuning in.